snip snap and let's add a custom gecko lip entity to minecraft Alright, we find ourselves back in Intelligent once more and in this tutorial we're going to be creating our custom entity finally. This is going to be of course the chopper over here if you've not seen this before. I have a four part series where I basically design this, make this, add some animations to it and now in this tutorial we're going to be adding this to Minecraft. Uh, without the attack animation and the next tutorial we're going to also add the attack animation as well very interesting stuff indeed so hostile entity including an attack animation so if you have a mob basically ready in block bench then what you can do is you can just go to file and then export export the gecko lib model this will export a geo.json file this is exactly what you need this is basically the geometric data for this particular file so we're just going to Save this, that's fine. And then to save the animations, go to the Animate tab, Animations, Animation, Export Animations, Confirm, and then the same thing goes. This is just now called model.animation.json. You can see this is chomper.animation.json. Uh, best to call this basically the name of your entity and then animation.json. We're going to replace that as well. That's fine. And then if you need the texture, you can always save it with this button here as well. But I already have this stomp underscore texture, so they're just going to save this as well. There you go. And now all three files that we need from Blockbench are exported, and then we can proceed in IntelliJ. Did I say IntelliJ? I, of course, meant in GitHub over here for the Gecko Lib repository, because here we actually need to, first of all, of course, add Gecko Lib to our IntelliJ project. And we can see this is basically for, uh, this would be for Forge, this would be for Forge, Forge, and then up here there should be Fabric, there you go, so this is the Fabric one. So Repository, this is the one that we have to add to our repository over here, so there's a Maven right here, we're gonna, just going to basically select it, press Control c to copy it, and then in our build.gradle file, under the repository right here, we would just want to add this, there you go, and then we would just want to go back one more time, and then we want to get this one over here, no worries, also select it, copy it with control C, and then we will just want to paste it in. Let's go down here, and that should be fine. Uh, usually the number basically increases on this page as well, so they usually uh, are pretty good at keeping this up to date, and then you also always have a an example build.gradle file that you can also take a look at. I think that that usually helps a lot as well. But now, once you basically pasted those two things in, you can press the little elephant at the top right corner and then just let it build. Now this can take anywhere from a few seconds up to a minute, maybe even a little bit longer depending on your PC, your internet connection, all of that. Just stay patient, wait until this has run through. You should get a build successful at the end if you've pasted everything correctly and then we can proceed afterwards. All right, there we go, 37 seconds for me. That's actually like quite fast, but that's gonna be okay. Right now, Gecko Lip should be added and to basically test this, and this is actually a thing you should do anyway, you can go Gecko Lip and you can see it is there, Software Bernie Gecko Lip 3. So we're just gonna say Gecko Lip initialize. And this is actually quite an important thing to call. Otherwise you might run into some issues on the server or client stuff. It's it's all sorts of weird, but so definitely call this rather be safe than sorry. Well, now we can start by adding the entity. So in our tutorial mode package, we're going to right click new package called entity. And in there, we're going to make a new package and this is going to be called custom. So this is where the actual entity class will go. And then in the entity package itself, first of all, we're going to need a mod entities class. There you go. And then in the custom package, we're going to need the chomper entity class over here. There you go. And this is also what we're going to start with. This is going to be a little bit circular once again, similar to the block entity, a little bit, but we'll see. So this will extend the hostile entity class over here, and it will also implement the iAnimatable interface. If the iAnimatable interface is not available to you, please make sure that GeckoLib is properly added to your, to your project, basically. Uh, otherwise, it's not going to work, of course. Now, let's hover over this, implement the methods. That's going to be fine. Is the register controllers method and the get factory method from the iAnimatable interface. Absolutely no worries. Create the constructor matching super, and there we go. And that should be pretty much no more errors should be present. Let's change this protected to public over here, and then let's start basically adding some stuff. So I'll, I'll be copying over sort of line by line. And the first line we need is a factory. Now, this is basically going to be a thing in any iAnimatable inter like implemented interface. You're always going to have this animation factory over here. And you always want it to return it right here in the getFactory method. So this is basically always going to be the same thing. Uh, it is never going to be anything different. Uh, I don't think so, at least. 
Right, then we can continue along and let's add the attributes next. So once again, this will be copied over. If you ever want to know like, oh, where, where did these came, things come from? Oh, that's actually not tameable entity. Let's, let's take this as a hostile entity, actually. Makes a little bit more sense in this case. And if you ever need to know or get some inspiration, what, what are those methods? Where do they come from? Middle mouse button, click on the hostile entity, for example. And first of all, you already have the hostile entity available here. You can also click on the hostile entity, press control H, and then you get every hostile entity class available to you from Minecraft. You can look at all of them. You can try to understand them. This is the best resource on entities that there is, right? So maybe you're like, oh, I really want to know how the warden works. Absolutely no worries. You can go through here and you can see the entire warden class and I mean pretty much how everything works. Now, this doesn't mean that it's easy to understand. Absolutely not. This definitely does require at least like, you know, advanced Java knowledge or like intermediate to advanced Java knowledge, but you still have everything available here. I cannot recommend it enough to basically take a look at it to keep in mind that you have pretty much access to almost all of the vanilla classes. So the attributes should be fairly self-explanatory, right? It just sets the attributes for certain things like the max health, the attack damage, the attack speed, and the generic movement speed. This shouldn't be anything too insane or too like crazy in this case, and that should be fine. Now, when it comes to the register controllers, this is a GeckoLib specific thing. And for this, we need a predicate. Now, I'll be copying this over because the predicates usually look very, very similar in all, in most regards, basically. And you can see that what we want to do is we have a predicate over here. The method signature should pretty much always look like this. And then inside of here, you can see if the, you know, if the actual entity is moving, then we're going to play the walk animation. And if that's not the case, then we're going to play the aisle animation. So that's basically where the two animations are played. As I've said, the attack one we're going to take a look at in the next tutorial. And to properly register the predicate over here, we need to add this. So we just need to take the animation data, add an animation controller. We're going to make, create a new controller called controller. And then here at the end here, we're just going to pass in the predicate method that we just copied over. This is pretty much a very similar thing. Every time you're making a, an, an animated entity, this is pretty much always the way that you want to do this. I'll also add some additional methods that might be interesting to you. You can override the get ambient sound method, get heard sound, get death sound, play step sound. So those are some interesting things. So you can basically, well, add custom sounds over here. And you can either add custom sounds or already existing sounds. And those will then be played, you know, as an ambient sound when the entity gets heard, when it dies and when it basically steps through the world, then you basically have this sound over here. So that's the general idea. You can play around with those. And of course, you can always just type in um, override over here to, well, take a look at every single method that you might be able to override and where it comes from. So you can see there is a lot of stuff like we're not done yet like it it keeps on going it keeps on going because entities they definitely are one of the most complicated things in minecraft modding but like stay realistic don't try to like as your first entity make a new ender dragon with like 18 different like phases or something like that don't go insane you know add a normal entity like this like a hostile entity add some stuff and then go from there Right, and now the last but certainly not least thing we want to do is the init goals method. This method is very interesting. First of all, we want to delete the super over here, and then we want to add some goals. So when it comes to goals, let's actually once again click on hostile entity, press control H, and then let's, for example, take a look at the zombie over here. And that's a good example. You can see that the init goals over here, you have, you know, destroy egg goal, look at entity goal, look around goal, and then you have some more goals. So, you, for example, you have, you know, the zombie attack goal, the move through village goal, wander around far goal. So there's a lot of goals. This is when people say, oh, I want some custom AI for my entity. This is what they're referring to. Basically goals. There's another AI system that's sort of also working with brains and stuff. I've not looked at that at all uh, at the moment we are basically taking a look at goals for this case. Now, what we can do is we can middle mouse button click on this, for example, just like one goal over here. Uh, that's actually inside of the class itself. You can see step and destroy block goal. And then you can see there's the move target pause goal, middle mouse button click. And then this one is extended by the goal class. And the goal class is the, well, the base entity class. If you click on this and press control H, you can see every single goal in vanilla. You can expand this and you can see everything here. Obviously, we're not going to go through this. We're not even going to get close to this. Not also not too much on the uh, in the next tutorial. But this is basically the idea. This is the best place to start for you. Go to the goal class. Look at the goals. If you have anything that you want to do, that's like 
you know, specifically interesting in terms of a custom goal, then you could do that there. For the time being here, I just wanted to, well, do the following. I'm just going to add some stuff over here. So you can see the goals over here are the swim goal, melee attack goal, and have a wonder, wonder around four goal and a look around goal. So those are going to be our four goals. The priority is in sort of ascending order. So that means that one has the highest priority and so on and so forth. And then we also need a target selector. So this, while it says it's a goal, it's a little bit different, right? So you can see the goal selector basically selects what the entity will do. And then the target selector, if the goal is something where you need a target for, for example, the melee attack goal obviously would be a target, you know, targeted goal because you need some sort of target for this then the target selector gets into action. You can see this is an active target goal. You can basically see that we're basically selecting, first of all, the player entity, then the merchant entity. We actually have merchant entity twice, so that's actually kind of funny. Uh, I don't, I'm not 100% sure if that's, uh, that's what we need to do. Let's just do this. And then the iron golem as well. So those would be the targets that this particular entity attacks. You can, of course, change this, right? So, for example, say, you know, this guy just, like, hates chickens. You can just change this, and then there you go. Now, the attack animation will not play because, number one, we have not even, like, specified the attack animation anywhere. And also, we have the normal melee attack goal. In the next tutorial, we're going to make a custom attack goal that's going to, well, basically factor in the custom, the animation as well. And then this is going to play as well. This is pretty much the entire entity class. This is done. This is fine. And then what we want to do with this is we want to register it in the mod entities class. Let's just start by adding a public static final entity type of type chomper entity we're going to call this the chomper and this is equal to registry making sure we choose net micro detail registry dot register this is the registry dot entity type with a new identifier with tutorial mod dot mod id of course or chomper and then after the parentheses we want a fabric entity type builder dot create this is going to be spawn group dot monster absolutely with a chompa entity colon colon new and then after the closing parentheses we want to do dimensions this is the dimension of the of the hitbox it's going to be entity dimensions dot fixed 0.4 f and 1.5 f i've already tried out some numbers over here so this should be fine and then after the second closing parentheses dot build one more closing parentheses and ending it with a semicolon and there you go. No errors should be present. All of the code as always will be available to you in the description below. Get a repository and individual just as well. And yeah, there you go. That should pretty much be the thing that we need here. And what we can do is we can immediately basically, I mean, keep this and go to the tutorial mod class. And inside of here, we actually want to register our attributes. This is extremely important. Do not forget to do this. Fabric default attribute registry dot register mod entities dot chomper chomper entity dot set attributes. If you don't do this when you spawn your entity, then your game is going to crash. Keep this in mind, and then it's going to say something like uh, attribute was not set. This is what you need if this is the case, right? And you can you can also see this if the set attributes method is yellow, then you know that it's being called, and then you know that it's everything should be right. Okay, so this is the entity class, and now we can proceed to adding the two client classes. This is going to be the model and the renderer. Those are going to be very interesting indeed. So let's just add a client package over here. I prefer to put this in a client package. You don't, of course, have to. You know, the package structure is pretty much whatever you want it to be. Chopper model. This is the first one. And then the other one is going to be the chomper renderer. Let's start with the model. So this is going to extend the animated geo model of type chomper entity, of course. Then let's hover over this, implement the methods. Those are going to be three methods over here. So these three methods are basically to be implemented. Now I'm just going to copy over one of the identifiers and then you're quickly going to realize what happens here. And you're going to say, oh, that, that is not crazy at all. And of course, all of the code, as every time I can mention this, available to you in the description below, get up a pastor and individual just as well. So you can see the model resource is just under the geo folder and this points to the geo JSON file. The texture is under textures entity chomper texture png and then here the animations are under the animations folder chomper.animation.json so those different things now need to be added into our assets folder tutorial mod folder and then basically going from there 
The first one is going to be the geo folder. And then inside of there, we need the geo chomper uh, JSON file. Absolutely. So we're just going to copy this over. There you go. So you should have this. This is where the geo JSON file goes. The next one is going to be the textures. So textures entity. We already have an entity. That's kind of nice. And then here, basically, the chomper texture goes. That's absolutely no worries. There you go. There you go. So textures entity chomper texture PNG. Perfect. And then last but not least, in the tutorial mode package, right click new directory called animations animations there you go and then chomper animation.json there you go and there you go hilariously this is the renderer class and not the model class that's actually kind of funny uh okay let me just like quickly fix this chomper model and then this is the chomper renderer otherwise we might just get into a little bit of uh, confusion over here which is not quite what we want all right, so now the chomper model is done. There you go. And then the chomper renderer, of course, extends the geo entity renderer class of type chomper entity over here. Let's hover over this, create constructor matching super. Here, what we want to do is we want to get rid of the second parameter, very important. And then, of course, you're going to be like, oh, but we get an error. Absolutely no worries. But this error, we just want to say new chomper model. There you go. And then here we can also specify the shadow radius. So this is going to be the, well, basically the shadow at the bottom of the, of the entity. It's going to be like 0.3. Maybe, yeah, 0.3, maybe 0.4, something like that. And then here, we also usually want to call the get texture resource over here and then just pass in the same texture over here. There you go. And then what you can do is you can also override the get render type method, this one right here. And here you can do some pretty cool stuff. So this basically allows you to, I mean, basically do any type of renderer stuff because you have access to the matrix stack. So you can basically do any type of rendering. And what you can, for example, do is you can do stack.scale and then this way you can, well, scale the entity any type of different factor. So let's just say we're going to scale the entity to about 80% its original size. Now the renderer and the model or the renderer and the entity still need to be sort of connected. And the way to do this is we're going to go into the tutorial mod client class and then here at the very bottom, we're going to say entity renderer registry dot register mod entities dot chomper chomper renderer colon colon new. No errors should be present. And this should be everything that we need for our custom entity. So of course, we're going to need an entity class should be fairly self explanatory. We need a renderer and a model. We need the mod entities class. And then of course, we need to get the JSON files in the texture over here. And that should be pretty much everything that we need. So in this case, let's just go into the game and see if it works. All right, fans of back in Minecraft. So let's just summon the entity. So slash summon and then tutorial mod chomper. There you go. Let's see. There it is. And well, first of all, it definitely does have the idle animation working. Let's see once it starts moving, whether or not the walk animation also plays. That would be absolutely splendid if that would work. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Come on. Move a bit. Move a bit. Come on. So it was hard to tell, but I'm pretty sure that the walk animation did play. And then in theory, if I spawn a villager, the uh, chomper should attack it. Let's see. There you go. Now, what you can clearly see is that the there's no attack animation. This is, of course, uh, basically by design as the attack animation will be added later. Now, it should also attack a chicken. Let's go. And it should also attack me if I'm in survivor mode. What's going on. Oh, man. Okay, there you go. So that, that definitely all works. So that's pretty awesome indeed. And a, well, pretty good start. And uh, now let's just, uh, for completion's sake, also add some spawn eggs for the chomper as well. Adding the spawn egg is not a hard thing at all. I'm just going to basically copy over the registration here. As always, everything available to you in the description below. It is just a new spawn egg item. You specify the entity that it should spawn, the primary and secondary colors here. And then, of course, you do still need the translation and stuff like that. But that is pretty much all that you need. So there you go. That's the translation. And then, of course, a item model file as well. Now, the item model file simply points back to Minecraft item template spawn egg. So you don't need to basically add any custom texture to it. And this is going to be done. So the name here, of course, as always, is just going to be the name here should be at this point, pretty much, you know, not even, you know, a question anymore in your mind. And that is pretty much it. And yeah, for completion's sake, let's just see this spawn egg as well. All right, back in Minecraft again, and uh, let's just see. There we go. The chomper spawn egg has been added, and we can, you know, just happily spawn some chompers over here, and everything should work totally fine. I mean, that's pretty awesome indeed, and that is how easy it can be to add a custom horse side gecko lip entity. Minecraft. 
Right, and that is it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new and I'll see you all in the next tutorial. So yeah, 